G'day team, Jesse here from DVO New Zealand. Uh, sorry it's been so long since we put a tutorial or video up. Uh, we've been busy getting the uh, this company up and running and getting everything off the ground. So yeah, a bit, a bit slack, but we're going to crack back into it today. So we are going to have a look at the new Topaz. Um, I'm calling it the Topaz X because uh, Topaz 2 and 3 were um different designs for different frames um topaz x is completely different um it's an all new design with a whole bunch of stuff in it that dvo have learnt over the last two to three years of running in various frames that are not very kind on shocks um so this version of this shock is absolutely bulletproof um and it looks badass so we're super stoked on that so yeah, I'm going to take you through it, show you some of the differences, show you some of the upgrades and updates that are in this thing over um, the Topaz that you're probably used to seeing. So as you can see, cosmetically, it's obviously different, um, but you don't need me to tell you that. Um, so we'll have a look inside it. First thing first, ear cap off. Get the ear out of the ear can. You are essentially opening a glorified bomb. And then, same as usual, hold the top of the shock. Get rid of Spin, and you'll see the air can spins off, and there might be a slight pop. Slide that down. So now the air can is separated from the body of the shock, and we're going to start having a look at some of the things that are different. So, most notably here is we now have a 12.7 mil stainless shaft. This is 2.7 mil thicker than the last shaft that was on the Topaz, which was a little alloy shaft. That poor guy had a really hard time in a lot of trunnion frames that weren't straight. Um, a lot of frames that use longer uh, yoke driven linkages that put a lot of side load stress on the shock. Um, so this here is a welcome change for um, a durability standpoint and a, a shock stiffness standpoint. We'll also see they all come fitted with the new seal head. Um, the seal head obviously has um, a larger port for the damper shaft to sit in, but also has a much taller lip. Um, so the seal head in theory should be should be quite a lot stiffer. We also have, I don't know if you can see down in there, we have a bigger bump stop. Um, so that rubber ring there that is uh, controls basically for bottom out is a lot thicker. And then we have a large, let me see in there. A large ring which supports that rubber o-ring from um, not being able to be pushed over the top of the um, the top of the fitting there and for travel adjustments like a few other shocks what we would do is we would have spaces sitting on the damper shaft here on the back side of this ring um, so they come in 2.5 mil increments so um, this here is a 50 to 55 mil shock so obviously a 2.5 mil spacer makes it 52.5 and then full 5mm space, it will make it 50mm. So for comparison, I've opened up one of the old ones here, so you can see the much smaller shaft versus the big rig. I don't know how to accurately compare that, but yeah, quite a bit different there. Um, so next thing we're going to look at is the ear cans. So you can see here, pretty regular ear can design, it's got quad seal, um, two little glide rings, and then the lip seal there. The when a shock was under a lot of flex, obviously this ear can um, is the part that is sitting against the damper shaft. If that ear can is getting twisted back and forward like that, obviously this is a load point, pretty heavy load point. So um, any of those frames that aren't straight um, or pretty hard on shocks would prematurely wear seals um, or even get to the point where um, it can push past these seals and actually rub the alloy housing on the damper shaft. With the new design, we have the same system, but then a much bigger glide ring and a, a much longer assembly that is designed to sort of dissipate that load over a larger surface area. So the idea is that we will no longer see um, any prematurely worn damper shafts, even in those frames that are super hard on shocks. Um, that glide ring is the same as what is on the fork air piston. Um, so those are super slippery, really low friction, um, and from yeah, 
the testing that we've done so far and some um, pretty gnarly frames are proving to be yeah a really big improvement um, other than that the cans obviously have different graphics but we still have that same um, positive chamber for progression um, and negative chamber for um, initial and sort of sag support but yeah that's the main sort of differences between between those two one that's going to be quite hard to show is um, this rebound adjuster is actually different now so where this adjuster sits inside the top of this housing here we have a small o-ring and if the um, the little plastic ring that sits on the top of the shaft was damaged or was was not serviced um, basically pressurized oil would load up in behind this assembly and when that would load up there was no reason why the little o-ring in there couldn't get pushed out whereas what DVO have done now is on top of making the assembly up here and a lot more durable is there yeah there's no way I'm going to get you to see this but there's a, a little lip there now so that if it is run past its service interval this o-ring here isn't going to push out um which is cool it's a it's a little thing that doesn't really affect anyone other than suspension technicians but that's what i am um and yeah we we really appreciate that that's a, a really cool improvement to have um yeah one other thing to note is the bladders as well i'm, I'm going to take this truck apart and show you what it looks like inside but the bladders are a lot thicker now um so they run at slightly lower pressures um but hold their pressure a little bit better um and deal with sort of being run at lower pressure a bit better so they don't get ba uh, beat up as much as they used to and that whole assembly like this whole housing here the outer wall that sits between the bladder cap and the bladder is much thicker too so what we're going to do now is we're going to actually just take this thing apart um so step one, whenever you're undoing the damper, is always check that there's no air. Um, make sure it's nice and secure in the vise, and then grabbing a hold here with the nipex, and we're going to crack that damper assembly free. Spin this off with the hands. Right. and then what we have here is we have exposed a different piston bolt um, and we're going to take the shaft off and have a look at what the new needle assembly looks like in there and then we're going to take the bladder out and show you guys um, what that all looks like as well right so we have the shock and the vice here I've removed the bladder um, which has dumped the pressure and then you pop this little can you see that little C clip out there and then the bladder just removes here we have an 11mm nut that holds the piston assembly onto the damper shaft. So we'll just grab our socket. Just remove. You see that nut just unscrews. And the assembly comes off. Make sure you take all the shims with it. It's nice and tidy. Now here we can see this is slightly different again as well as basically where this damper shaft is now this is the new plate that it bolts onto um, now that has a four mil um, key in the top of it so we can drop that in and this should unscrew the whole damper shaft and that takes off the damper shaft seal head and now I've exposed the ring and yeah, we'll carry on. So we've got just the, the body left there. Nothing super exciting to look at there. Obviously this wall here that I'm showing you um, is a lot thicker again. Um, and yeah, we'll go through and just have a look at the the assembly of the, the rebound needle and the seal head. Um, one thing I have actually noticed just while taking this out of the vise is this is a lot heavier um, than before, which is a really good thing. Um, obviously means there's more material in here and that's something I'm pretty happy with. Also looks like, I mean I can't show you on camera, but down there that the uh, reservoir port looks a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger possibly. Um, so possibly higher oil flows, but I'll need to check with DVO on that. And then from here, remove the bottom out O-ring. So that's the O-ring that sits against that bumper there. And then, see, wow. Another thing I've just noticed is how smooth the seal head now is on that new shaft that is just 
yeah I've, I've ridden the shock and i've definitely noticed there's a really big reduction in friction um on the last air shock but yeah that there has got to be a really big part of where that's coming from that just moves so nicely um so yeah, slide that off and then we expose our rebound uh needle and then this is the new shaft so from what i can see that plate is threaded into the top side there so we're not going to take that out because there's no need um, but then you can see see the rebound ports there and this is the threaded side and this thing has some serious weight to it like we'll go this is the it's good lighting so you can see the difference between those two shafts alone um, massive improvement well played DVO super stoked on that that's um, yeah that's a really big plus um, and a really big win for e-bike customers and um, yeah, customers in frames that are pretty hard on shocks. Right team, so that is a deconstructed view of what's going on inside that new Topaz compared to the old one. Um, in summary, it is just, it's stiffer, it's smoother, it glides nicer, it's going to be more durable, um, and overall it's just a better unit. Um, pretty stoked it's a very small price increase here in new zealand it's i think 80 new zealand dollars price increase um availability on the 185 and 210 sizes is pretty much now um the 230 and 205 sizes is due to be end of january um, and that should be worldwide so yeah massive thanks to dvo for improving um an airshock to the point where i am very excited to actually put this thing on my bike and ride it i've been a a jadex coil convert for a long time now um, but now opening this thing up and getting a really good look at it um, has given me a lot of confidence that this this air shock has the ability to be as good so yeah i'm going to get this thing put back together and go out and ride it on my bike thank you all for watching and as per usual if you have any questions um, related to the topaz or this new topaz um, just jump in the comments below and i'll do my best to answer as many of those as i can thanks team